Welcome to 519 Connect, where the Windsor Police Service connects with members of our community. Let's talk. Let's have a conversation. Welcome to 519 Connect. I'm Constable Jamie Ajete Nelson, Diversity Officer with the Windsor Police. And today, our show is called Showcasing Black History in Windsor and Essex County. And what better person to have than Irene Moore Davis? Thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, I'm excited. So a little bit about you, Irene. I want to share it with our, our viewers. Uh, she's an educator, historian, writer, podcaster, and community advocate who speaks and writes frequently about equity, diversity, and inclusion, and African-Canadian history. Irene is a graduate of Herman, Herman High School here in Windsor, uh, University of Windsor, Western University, Queen's University. Wow. Wow. Uh, and has recently uh, retired from a role as the department uh, chair at St. Clair. Um, in 2000, uh, 2022, Irene was the recipient of the Harriet Tubman Award for a commitment to a purpose from the Ontario Black History Society and was named to the 100 accomplished black women in Canada. She resides in Windsor, Ontario with her husband, Rodney Davis. Yes. Yeah, that's a, that's, that's a bio. That's a, it's a great bio. It's... You know, as we say, it's a historical bio. bio. Um, I think it, it, it speaks to you, and I've been lucky to sit on um, some boards and uh, watch you be a leader and watch you advocate for our community. And just recently, you came into uh, the Windsor Police Service and, and gave that um, great, amazing, much-needed presentation to our, our, our new officers about anti-Black racism. Um, it, it's a lot. Um, you know, how did you become a historian then a leader and an advocate, where did that, that flourish in you? I think I was born into it. I mean, I came from a family that was very engaged in the community, certainly, and very interested in history. So um, there was kind of no escape. <laughs> <laughs> You're born into it, yeah. <laughs> but I enjoy it, and, and it's, you know, it's really awesome. I love seeing the results and the outcomes, you know, when you're um, when you're talking to young people, especially about their history or about the history of all of us. It is incredibly fulfilling to see people sort of awaken to the realities of how much people of African descent have contributed in this community, this region, this nation, the world, um, and to sort of see the possibilities for themselves. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, that is just so rewarding. And, and it, not just kids of African Caribbean or, or black heritage, but all kids to learn those things and just to find out about the really interesting things that happen right here in this community, the streets that they're walking um, you know, they really, really do take to it as long as you're telling those stories that are vibrant and rich and that they can see themselves part of. So did this like start in, in high school for you, like your stories? I remember being in high school and um, it was hard to find our, our history and, and our stories. Um, you say you're kind of born into it. Were you sharing your history with people? I was pretty regularly sharing my history with people and sometimes you know, sometimes the teachers didn't like it, but I'd be correcting them a little bit, too. Mm. <laughs> I mean, in elementary yeah. <laughs> school, because they would be talking about, oh, you know, when black people started arriving here in the 60s and stuff. And <laughs> whoa, I, whoa, it's a little bit late. <laughs> yeah, I, I would say my family's been here since the 1840s, actually. And, uh, you know, this is our history. And there are many other families around here who have been around that long and uh, and have been part of every war, every social movement, um, and have contributed so much. Elected officials, doctors, lawyers, teachers, politicians, as I mentioned, uh, you know, civic leaders, um, and just workers and people running businesses and, and building the community. You know, we've been here um, almost as long as anyone other than the indigenous peoples, obviously, and there are lots of stories to tell. Yeah, that's great. Um, I'm originally from Toronto, and... Uh, when I came to Windsor, um, I went to St. Joseph's High School, and you know, one of the first things I learned, you know, I, you know, I stuck out very easily. Um, was the, the black community here? Like um, when they brought me in, and I learned about the history of uh, of Windsor. And for a long time, I thought it was, it felt like it was a secret. But now, when I go home or to my other home, but Windsor's my home now. When I go see family and you know, they talk about Windsor, they talk about that black history. And um, you've been, uh, you know, very pivotal in, you know, making it not only provincial, national, but international. And, you know, uh, documentaries, uh, CBC, Discovery Channel, like, 
How, how did those opportunities get to you? You know what? I mean, again, I've been involved in, in, in telling these historical narratives for a very long time. And just, you know, you get invited to do a speaking engagement here or attend a conference there. Um, I'm always very enthusiastic about this history, and I love to tell these stories. And I can tell them for an academic audience, but I really prefer to tell them for everybody in a way that's accessible. So, I mean, when you make a practice of that, people become very comfortable hearing from you. And, and I think that's led to a lot of opportunities. I am able to write academic articles when I need to, but I would rather convey this history in a way that a grade six student or a grade eight student or a high school student can appreciate and relate to. Yeah, uh, it's, and, and it shows, um, you know, you have different platforms now, you, you podcast, you have, uh, you know, television shows, um, you know, how, how did you, where, why did you get into that? What was it, it like? Oh my goodness. Um, you know, well, for one thing, I just, I like to talk. <laughs> <laughs> if you ask Rodney Davis, he'll say like, I say one sentence for every 12 sentences of yours and he's correct. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I just, you know, I love to tell stories and I love to showcase local people and people in the region. So all of those opportunities just come together in wonderful ways. And we have all of these platforms, as you say. The podcast, All Right in Sin City, came about because uh, two friends and I had been involved for many years in Bookfest Windsor. I'm the programming chair at Bookfest Windsor. My other friend was on the committee for years and, and one of us was the festival chair uh, and the president of Literary Arts Windsor. So we decided, you know, in addition to just hosting this wonderful annual event that brings all of these authors together, diverse authors, we really focus on equity and inclusion and representation in that festival. Um, you know, we'd like to showcase authors year round and talk about their writing process and talk about how they got started and what inspires them. And so we focus on writers across the Detroit Windsor River region. Mm -hmm. And so that allows us to interview authors from Michigan, authors from Essex County, authors from Chatham-Kent or just the Great Lakes region, as well as authors who are coming in to book fest from all over Canada. And so we've been doing that since 2019. We hit our 100th podcast, I think it was uh, sometime last fall. Congrats. And, you know, <laughs> we, we have listeners in 19 countries now, and that's so exciting. The Windsor Public Library actually uh, brings our podcast in and, and helps uh, they sort of use it to curate book clubs and things of that nature and and I'm just so thrilled that it's got that listenership and then in terms of the other things talking real melanin is the talk show that I, we I recently love I love the name <laughs> I love it <laughs> yes it was actually Moya McAllister who came up with that Moya McAllister has a birthday coming up so happy birthday Moya there it is but, <laughs> Moya and Angie and I uh, were among the founders of an organization called Black Women of Forward Action. Mm -hmm in 2020, and uh, we host weekly um, check-ins for black women uh, or black African-Caribbean women of Windsor-Essex County every Monday night except stat holidays, and we just talk through our issues, we have guest speakers come in, we have discussion topics, we just make sure that everybody's feeling supported, supported and that we're focusing on our mental health and, and on community uplift, right? So... Um, one day, uh, we were having a, a sort of a holiday mixer for that uh, organization, and a friend of ours who is involved in Your TV, Kojiko Windsor, um, sort of saw what was going on and said, you should have a talk show. So we said, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Yeah. So we pitched this talk show. We worked with her, Kristen Siapis, wonderful producer, uh, director, and... Um, we launched the talk show last summer, and it was really an incredible experience. We shot 10 episodes in like four days. <laughs> Lots Ooh. of wardrobe changes, <laughs> I have to tell you. But we brought on guests who represent the Black African Caribbean community of Windsor, Essex County. We focus on a business, a Black-owned business every week. We have a Black uh, performing arts person with us every week, every episode, uh, sharing poetry or music or something of that nature. And um, the response to that show has just been really wonderful. People find it quite compelling and entertaining, but also the topics are really, you know, we get into the meat of the topics. And I'm so glad that we have that platform to share things that are of interest or concern to our community. That's, that's great. Um, that's a lot. Um, and I feel like along the way, when you become an expert, um, when you become an advocate, a leader, a lot is asked of you. And you know, how did you, you navigate that? Because 
we want to do it all. Uh, you know, <laughs> I, I feel like you just, I, I would love to just be that much more for my community, but with experience is great, but there's only so much time. Yes. Um, how, how did you, you know, how did you, you know, help people without being there all the time? Like, what did you, what were those conversations like? Cause you can't do it all. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've learned for sure that no is a complete sentence and that you can't do it all and that you have to kind of pick your spots and figure out what you're really good at, what your gifts are, and how you can best deploy those for the community. I mean, I'm sure like you, I get asked to be on boards and stuff like every month of the year, somebody's reaching out saying, do you want to be on this committee or whatever? And you can't do it all. You can't say yes to everything. But I am a connector of people. I know who's good at things. And, you know, if I'm offered an opportunity and I say no, I can always say, but you know who would be really great for that? Yeah. And I, you know, I'm usually spotlighting some sort of young person on the rise or younger person on the rise who has like a great base of knowledge or expertise in a particular area or a great interest in that area. And I find just, you know, having a network and remembering who's doing what in the community and who might be able to collaborate together. Those are ways that I can assist without actually being on that board or in that room, right? Yeah, mentoring is key. Um, I, I imagine you mentor just from everything you do, um, you know, whether it's in your church or what, whether it's in an organization. Um, how do you feel uh, your mentoring, uh, the community ha has been working? Because I'm sure you've had, you know, being at the university in St. Clair, um, have you made time for that to, to mentor? I think it's really important we all have to do that. And I mean, none of us got to these places that we are occupying by, um, you know, not being mentored by others. Everybody who's made some sort of success in life has had some people pushing them along, giving them advice, offering some guidance, sometimes correction. Mm -hmm. um, and I certainly was the benefit. I was the beneficiary of many wonderful mentors, my own family foremost, obviously they were very civically engaged people involved in a lot of organizations and a lot of important work um, going centuries back, but, mm -hmm. but well, decades back. Okay. Um, but, you know, certainly growing up, I saw my grandfather in action. He was the first uh, black zone commander of the Royal Canadian Legion and a high school teacher. My mom was on the founding board of the, of the uh, now Amherstburg Freedom Museum. I was literally the little kid that cut the ribbon on opening day. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my grandmother was very involved in, in a variety of organizations. She was like really instrumental in desegregating some spaces, especially recreational spaces in Windsor in her youth as a young adult with her friends. Very engaged throughout her life in um, organizations that lifted up black youth in particular um, and was a church historian. Um, you know, and my aunts and, and uncle and so on. So it was just really wonderful to see that growing up. And, you know, to hear parliamentary procedure being discussed around me and stuff was a little helpful too. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know <laughs> yeah. how to run things later. <laughs> but, you know, I had lots of family friends and community members who I spoke of or described or felt uh, were aunties and uncles who weren't mm -hmm. our direct relatives, but yeah. who were constantly mentoring and, uh, you know, great teachers through the years. So, I mean, all of that sort of lives within you as you grow up, as you enter adulthood, as you become a young professional or go into whatever sphere of influence you're going to have. And it's really uh, important to pass that forward and to recognize the gifts that you were given and to uh, learn how to let other people stand on, on your shoulders, too. I really believe in lifting as we climb. It's my favorite phrase in the world. That's a good one. Um, yeah, Mary Church Terrell was a great African-American women uh, activist who, um, who coined that phrase uh, as part of the so-called colored women's club movement of the uh, early 20th century, late 19th, early 20th century. And lifting as we climb is something that I have engraved on the portfolio that I carry, and it's like on my... Uh, laptop on you know the opening screen like all of that stuff and I just remember it all the time and and I think that sometimes in our society we're taught to just sort of push yourself forward or just you know make it and don't look back and yeah. you know remove all of the people around you that are hangers on and yes I mean we have to be careful about you know who we're surrounding ourselves with but you know if you see somebody coming up behind you don't just claim it all for yourself like share the knowledge and uh, help them along. We all benefit when people in our community are doing better overall. Yeah, oh, that's that's great. Um, you know, you hit some great points there, and, and 
it seems like it could be a lot sometimes, but I, when I talk to you, you see, you seem very grounded. You seem um, um, like you know how to navigate because sometimes you can be like just from your resume alone, you're out there and everyone wants you. How do you, um, you know, your, your mental health um, to keep yourself? Because, you know, a person in your position and even as a police officer, sometimes you, uh, when people are struggling, they, they come to you. Mm-hmm. Um, and it can be, you know, hearing people's traumas and things like that and helping them. Um, how do you, how would you navigate something like that? Like, what do you do to de-stress or not de-stress or even just, uh, you know, take some time to yourself, like get you some hobbies? Yeah, I mean, this isn't a religious podcast, but I do have to say my faith helps me a lot with that. My personal faith helps me a lot with that. It keeps, gives me a great sense of perspective. Mm-hmm. Um a sense of history helps a lot. You know, if you see yourself as like one piece in a long spectrum of uh, black people moving upward and onward and supporting one another, then, you know, you have a, a, a better sense of sort of where you fit in and that this is not the end of the world. <laughs> and that, yeah. You know, you're going to keep it moving and people after you will keep it moving and people before you kept it moving. So, I mean, those perspectives really help me. But, you know, just having a great circle of friends, mm. having a wonderful family. I don't have kids, but I have, you know, incredible aunts and uncles and cousins and yep. and all of these wonderful people around me and just a, a great extended family, you know, um, whether it's here in Windsor or over in Metro Detroit or in North Buxton or wherever. Yeah. Um, and And just, you know... You have to sort of recognize the signs in your body when it's time to take a break. Yes. Um, there are there are times like Black History Month when no breaks will be taken, believe me. <laughs> <Yeah>. But <laughs> generally speaking, um, you want to kind of monitor how you're feeling, how your breathing is, you know, where there's stress in the body and just like know when to step away. And when it's time for me to step away, I paint, I write poetry, I play the piano, I watch Food Network. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I'm like a competitive Food Network watcher. <laughs> hey, oh, I remember living on that channel. I learned a lot. <laughs> well, sure. <laughs> but I mean, just, you know, those things. And live music helps me a lot, too. I've always loved live music. I think I have been to probably more concerts than uh, 90% of the population. Hey, <laughs> if you like it, go get it. Yeah. And I still just, you know, I love just going to see live jazz in particular. And uh, all of those things really help with just sort of keeping me on a, on an even keel, I guess. Balance. Balance. And, uh, you know, talking about Black History Month and, um, you know, it's going to be a busy one. Um so the Essex County Black Historical Research Society, there must be a lot you're doing there and that organization. So, you know, what, what's to come? Oh, my goodness. It's so exciting. I mean, we've had a really fantastic couple of years, and it's just getting better and better. So uh, we have our uh, joint Black History Month kickoff happening on January 27th. It's always the last Friday in January every year. We're doing it in person for the first time since 2020. So we're so happy to be together again and not on Zoom (laughs) (laughs) over at the Caribbean Center. And I mean, that once again is a partnership between the Essex County Black Historical Research Society, the Amherstburg Freedom Museum, the Windsor West Indian Association, and Black Women of Forward Action. And we'll have wonderful performances and history tidbits and some light refreshments and just a great feeling of inspiration and uplift. That's what that moment always brings. And we kick off the Black History Month activity schedule for Windsor and Essex County. And we have about currently about 30 different things happening for Black History Month wow. all around uh, Windsor and Essex County. And it is so exciting just to see so many different organizations and groups participating and finding their own way to celebrate. I think Black History 365 is, is something we want to pursue. Yes. But, but when February comes along, we recognize that the public has a hunger for black history, and we do want to capitalize on those opportunities to get people really interested and excited. So we do that. Um, but something else that we've been working on, uh, we were very, very, very blessed and so grateful to receive $100,000 from federal uh, Fed Dev Ontario mm-hmm. for a new Black History mural project. So those are going up right now um, near the corner of Erie and Mercer. And those are Black History murals that recognize Alton C. Parker, Fred yep. Thomas, Ada Kelly Whitney, James L. Dunn. And that has just been wonderful to see that project coming together. There will also be some curriculum pieces and educational video 
Um, some other really great things happening, uh, developing a walking tour around it. We also were part of a consortium of partners led by the University of Windsor that received $245,000 uh, in 2022 for a new mobile app, walking tour, website, uh, some display materials about the history of the McDougal Street Corridor. That's a history that not enough people know about, even that's, in this city. That's so true. I didn't know until well, yeah. last summer. So that's been super exciting, and, and that's coming together. The website and the mobile app and the walking tour should be ready by about mid-February. And um, we're looking forward to having a more formal launch in the spring when people actually feel like walking around outside. <laughs> <Yeah>. yes, <laughs> yes. But it's great. That mobile app, uh, it was developed by Parallel 42 Systems. We're so happy to be working with them. And uh, it's going through testing right now. It's really exciting. It looks great. And basically, I mean, I'm not super technical in mm. nature, but um, it's geocached, basically. So as you are walking or, or riding your bike or whatever around the different parts of the McDougal Street corridor, if you have that app uh, up, it will tell you what used to be there and what history happened there. It will show you a short video. It will show you pictures of what it used to look like and who was involved and so on. So there are about 24 stops on that uh, mobile app that you know you can learn about that history just as you're in the area. And that's so exciting. And of course, through the Gordie Howe Bridge Authority and the University of Windsor, we received some funding to produce three new documentaries, all oh. called Across the River to Freedom. They're a series of short documentaries, and they focus on the history of uh, Mary and Henry Bibb, uh, Thornton and Lucy Blackburn, and Caroline Quarles Watkins and Alan Watkins, three couples who were really instrumental in the black history of Sandwich. So those will be coming out in February as well. So we are just so thrilled wow. that we've had these opportunities to share history in such interesting ways. Wow, that is a full packed February, which, like <laughs> you said, which it should be. And I'm I'm really excited for for the app. Um, you know, even for the schools as well. That's uh, you know, I remember as a kid field trips, right? Mm -hmm. And it, it's moving along with technology because we all know the students have their phones and their tablets, and to have that that feeling and somewhere to bring it back to I, I it's it's great um I look forward to it I um especially you know the Alton C, C Parker you know people don't know that history as well even even in our own service and uh, you know being able to highlight that uh, I, I think it's 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 always what's needed and it, it brings um you know not just the black community but the Windsor community because I always say it um black history is Canadian history Oh, for sure. Yeah, and um, I, know I heard it's a cliche, but I've heard it before. But every time I hear it, I'm like, it's like a reminder. It is. Yeah. It is. And I mean, if we're being honest, um, you know, Canadian history, the way it's been taught and the way, unfortunately, it's still taught sometimes, and I'm not here to cast aspersions on history teachers. I know they have like a ton of curriculum to get through and they're just trying to hit all their targets. But a kid can literally leave the school system and have heard like three minutes of information about indigenous people <laughs> People yep. of African descent, people of Asian descent, and so on. And, and you know, we still have to keep working on correcting that. I'm very happy that at the History Society, we had some opportunities to work with the Great Essex County District School Board to develop some wonderful curriculum resources. Mm -hmm. They're not mandatory, though. Uh, the African-Canadian Roads to Freedom documents are, are cool and they're full of information, but, you know, a teacher has to find time to implement them and to, to embed them in what they're doing. So... Um, I think we still have a lot more work to do in terms of getting more teachers on board and helping them to feel comfortable delivering that. Sometimes there's some reticence because they're afraid of using the wrong terms or afraid of saying the wrong thing or of offending somebody. Yeah. So, I mean, some training and some development is needed to help people feel comfortable implementing those materials. But it's not just black kids that need to hear about our history. Like, every every young person yeah. needs to know that this place, this community, this country were built with the work and efforts and collaboration of people of all shades. And that helps us to understand better how Canada came to be and what everyone's role is and what everybody's possibilities are. We can't just hear about rich, affluent white guys all the time. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that, that's great. Um, you know, I, I look forward to, I always do uh, February, but you know, I look forward to seeing the gains that, uh, you know, you and Windsor and Essex County has in, in the development of, you know, uh, legislation, curriculum, 
um, you know, for all of Canada. And I, I can't thank you enough for, um, you know, coming on the show, but also uh, being a part of some of the, the changes that we're having at the Windsor Police Service. So I want to thank you again. Um, I, I appreciate you as always. I, I look forward to, to listening and working with you. So uh, there you have it, um, 519 Connect, uh, Irene Moore Davis, uh, look to see more of her and look more to see of uh, Windsor Police collaborating with our community on uh, future events. Thanks. Thanks.